Every word from Mikel Arteta's pre-Everton press. And we need to win, man. It's the set-piece derby, you know. Sean Dyche's men, you know, I think they've scored eight goals from set-pieces. Only Arsenal have better, although four came in one game. Let's see exactly what's been said. Now, for me, Calafuri and Gabriel need to be fit. On whether Gabriel and Calafuri could be fit, there's a possibility of one of them to be available. He trained today and we'll see tomorrow. Hmm. He, Mikel Arteta, loves a mind game. If I was a betting man... Um, I don't know why I feel I'm more, mm, are you more hopeful on Gabriel or are you, or are you more hopeful on Calafuri? Because I, I don't know why, I just think with Gabriel, it could be that. Now, we've heard a lot of rumours, it's knees, it's hamstrings, it's a con potential concussion after West Ham. Mikel Arteta said in the week, obviously, with him becoming a starter for Brazil, he's kind of been carrying, carrying a muscular injury. Calafuri, in the last two international breaks, has picked up an issue. And then he did say something about how Calafuri, we need to put him in a cage, basically alluding to if it was up to him, he'd be here and we might have to be a bit cautious. So I'm probably a bit more, I, I think that's in relation to Gabriel. It could be Calafuri, Mikel Arteta, Mind Games Masterclass. On having to be cautious with Calafuri as he hasn't had a run of games, or it could be both of them, by the way. We're just respecting the times that the medical department has set and then we'll just monitor his evolution every single day. We understand that he's not fully ready yet, but he's getting very close now. So maybe, have I read the first thing wrong? On whether Gabriel Calafuri could be fit, there's a possibility one of them to be available. He trained today. And then you look at the Calafuri thing, so it could be Gabriel. On if anyone's ruled out, he said no, apart from the ones that were out already. I mean, Mikel Arteta, blood, you, you, you know, you, you're playing a blinder here, man. You definitely learned this from Wenger. Big up Lewis Skelly. He certainly deserves to be in contention to be selected because he performed and competed really well. At his age, to show mentality on the pitch is strange and off the field is exactly the same. He's a person who continuously surprises all the staff with the kind of questions that keep all of us asking a lot of times that shows you the intelligence of the person and miles is a really bright boy what bigger praise can you get from Mikel Arteta beyond what you got against um Monaco you always take a chance no one can guarantee you a performance it doesn't matter about experience or that age but he was surrounded by very senior and experienced players we believe that it was the right context for him to for him to succeed and have the team to perform to win the game and he certainly did that does he believe that in relation to the Everton game I'm not sure now against Monaco for the first time we saw Moreno, Declan Rice and Odegaard start a game together with Tom for me I'd argue the best midfield whatever you got to say is has Thomas Partey and has Odegaard whether you want Moreno or Rice is up to you I would lean towards Moreno but I mean Rice definitely Rice respectfully Mikel to the other Mikel but I would say with Partey's contract, and maybe if think maybe if Moreno never got injured, maybe we'd see a bit more of that. And he said there have been there's there has been recently a lot of new units. So yeah, you've seen Saliba and Kivio, you've seen Timber play with a diff couple of different left backs, probably the same on the right hand side. Lewis Skelly's coming to the team. There have been a lot of new units, and certainly that was one that we had planned and discussed. And I think they can play so well together. They did a really good job. They will play together again for sure in the near future. I think they complement each other really well. Hmm, that's interesting, based on the fact that we've obviously got Everton, and the next week we've got a double header against Crystal Palace, you know, on the weekend away from home at Selhurst Park in the Premier League and before that quarterfinals. He then said, they are intelligent and have football brains. There are three players that like to play for others, especially. You have players that can hold the ball in tight spaces. They can run with the ball. They have a threat in the box. You have creativity in tight spaces. You have a lot of things that you want. In the defensive part as well, you have two players that are more are holding midfielders and Martin is exceptional in his timings and, and, two ands there, aggression in the high press, so it's very good. Big up Nicholas Holver, you would have seen his memorial, his memorial, apologies, moral outside the Emirates. Now, in natural circumstances, you've probably seen everybody losing their minds over that. I just think it's a bit of fun and to be fair, it's a, it's, uh, we can have a laugh and a joke, but it's a bit of recognition because obviously Mikel Arteta, Pep Guardiola, Arsene Wenger, Sir Alex Ferguson, Conte, the list goes on. Obviously, they're the ones that's going to get all the praise, but they can't do it alone. You need coaching staff, definitely in today's day and age. And obviously, it's evident when we're scoring from corners and, you know, you. I'm sure Nicholas Holver got into a bit of argy-bargy with his former club, Manchester City, when a few years ago, or better yet, they're players. But it's nice to see a bit of highlights and big him up for a new deal because... He's probably doing... Well, he is, you know, Mikel Arteta and the players, I think we're doing all right, but we could do a lot more. 
what more could you ask from Nicholas Holver, really and truly? Like, he's the one earning proper earning every penny and even got to give him a bit more. He's doing his job where corners are concerned. Big up Kevin Campbell, RIP Kevin Campbell. Obviously, this is a Kevin Campbell derby. You would imagine Arsenal and Everton will play tribute before the game, and hopefully, that is the case. But Kyle Saka's getting a lot more credit for his performances in the Champions League, as we know. First of all, you have to be in the competition. We certainly are now, and the players and everyone has to step up to that level. It's remarkable what he's doing consistently every three days in three different competitions at this level is really good, and he'll continue to do that. Big him up. He's obviously going to big up Everton. He learned a lot of values and whatnot. On Everton having more time to prepare for this game, I mean, is there any excuses? We're in more competitions with the greatest of respect to Everton. We knew this climate, so it is what it is. We're going to have to get on with it. On if Saka is world-class, I don't know. I don't like putting labels on players. He's exceptional at what he does and he's doing it very consistently. Now we need to go to the next step with things collectively as well to get to that level. That's the aim. Fair enough, people, if I'm honest with you. Um, we all know Everton have struggled. You know, they're flirting near the bottom of the table, have not picked up that many wins. So, you know, respectfully to Everton, I'm sure they want to turn it around, but we need to handle our own business. As I said in the other video that came out today, they would have had a Merseyside derby and then us. I believe they've got Manchester City and I believe they've got Forest. So it's tough games on um the importance of being threats of both sides of the pitch we certainly have that but obviously it's never going to be the same because they have different qualities we need to understand that we have many other threats in our left side and over the years we've done it if not we wouldn't be scoring the amount of goals that we have scored in the last two seasons so i'm really pleased with that difference is good it doesn't have to be symmetrical asymmetrics in football are great and very difficult to combat we continue to go and try and to improve i hear that michael but i think the Monaco game was the first time in a while I actually saw our left-hand side looking a consistent threat. Uh, shout out to Luis Skelly and Gabriel Jesus and everyone for that, for definitely the first goal in particular. Um, on how important Mikel Moreno could be, that's something we've had a lot of instability in recent years. He's referring to the left-hand side. So finding that stability, those relationships, that time together, putting players that can connect with each other and find those chemistries are very important. It's true that we've never had consistency, especially because of a availability on the left and on the right. So for me, the biggest thing with I like with Mir I would like I said, Partey, Odegaard, Rice, that's it for me. But if that is the trio, I think he'll persist with Declan Rice as an eight. Mikel Moreno, naturally, he could be the six at times, but naturally he will go into the eight and Rice will be in the six, his bread and butter. So we'll have to see. But more options, difficult to combat, man. On if on if he ever shows Saka the output of other force for inspiration, naturally he must. But it's most importantly that Saka keeps doing what he's doing. Not only what he's doing, obviously, but pushing himself, which I think he is. He always sets targets, but it's about understanding how we're going to reach those targets. If we have an idea to score 30, 40 goals, it's about how we're going to do it and then how we're going to create a plan to try to develop the players to give them the best possible chance to make sure he's able to do that. Um, on the dinner, dinner after last season's final day win at home against Everton, it was obviously mixed emotions. Very sad because we had the hope that we could do it on the last day of the season. It's happened many times in this league, but we weren't able to do that. And at the same time, pride and fire in the belly and motivation to understand that we're there and we're good enough to do it. And we have to push again because we really want it. Um, on which players that mindset came from, I don't like to explain that, but a few players came straight away with that kind of talk. On if Saka could move to a central position like Messi and Ronaldo, I think that would depend on a lot of qualities and the players who are around him. For someone to be an inside instead of an outside, someone has to be outside and that player, that fullback, that attacking midfielder and that nine has to allow the space to do that. But I'm very certainly open to keep evolving players. Sometimes it's the role, sometimes it's the position on the pitch and sometimes there are other things we can do so that he can spend more time in this position because when the ball is far on the opponent's side, we can choose where we want him, but certainly we're thinking about these kind of things. Only if he leaves it up to Saka and Martinelli to determine their positioning. Their understanding of the game and spaces and time is that they move in relation to each other is strong. I think the freedom has to increase because the decision making is going to improve, hopefully on Martinelli's case more than Saka's, because they understand it better. So they create uncertainty in the opposition. And at that moment, they're in the stage where they have a lot more freedom than in the past. On Martinelli potentially being a long term striker, which I used to believe it and I still think that could happen. But I'm very pessimistic on that, especially where Martinelli... The goals and assists are one thing, but the decision making and the, the, the footballing IQ would need to improve before you ever look anything like a percentage of a Luis Suarez or an ex Alexis Sanchez on the left hand side, let alone when he was a false nine. 
He's played there a few times. Gabby is so good when he's got the line on his back and he's facing forward and he's got the ball in the diagonal. I haven't thought too much about that and he's so comfortable playing there, especially on the left-hand side. So I think we'll see other evolutions more than this one. On Jason Atto and our sporting director situation going into January, we have one. Jason Atto is our interim sporting director and he's got the full capacity and support of the football club. He's doing really well with his team. Then the process is open. Obviously, as you know, the club with the support of all of us and the intervention of all of us will decide who they think is the best man to move us forward. On if there's any progression on appointing a permanent director, I'm sure there's a process. Yes, I think, you know, we'll just have to wait for the David Ornstein bomb as they say, and whatnot. On a potential busy January in which, nah, I, I say it's more hope than anything else from me personally. Let me know your thoughts. I never expect January to be super busy. But we have to wait and see where we are. We really don't know where we are, Gaffer. Injuries, needing a striker, needing a winger, things that we didn't do in the summer, fair play. Some surprises can come. We are prepared for that. Some opportunities as well. And we have to see. Hopefully, the squad availability is going to be better in a few weeks. So we'll have to wait and see. So maybe we'll only dip into the market if there's setbacks and more injuries. I don't know. On if the pathway now is clearer for academy footballers. In terms of intention on what we want, it's clear. We want to look in the academy and we have to understand if what we need is actually there in the moment because sometimes with the age group, the timing doesn't always work. I agree. But we're extremely happy with the way that the academy is working and to pick up Lewis Skelly and Ethan and to see the talent is rising. Now we have to create space in the squad for those kids to have the right amount of time in the role they deserve in the squad. On when the sporting director position will be resolved, they're on to him. Timing wise, it's difficult to understand. I'm not running that process. So it's more a question for the club to respond on if he'd like it to be settled soon. Yes, but we are convinced that we have the right person with the right team that can work with a lot of people who are doing extremely great work at the moment. Somebody is going to help us go to the next level and we might have it internally. So is that, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to read this, but simultaneously, the Athletic have come out with a piece on Jason Atto and said the Arsenal scout turned interim sporting director who has something special. And they've spoken about basically how he got more responsibility and trust from Edu, how he's a certified manager in his own right, how he, you know, his previous experiences, how he collabed with a couple of sub team members to bring Tommy Setford from Ajax and a bunch of other stuff, people. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst, but I would like someone more experienced. Allegedly, earlier this month, scout Marco Palmer reported Arsenal have already asked about the signing of Palmeiras' Victor Rice. Apparently, he backs that up and provides the latest on the Gunners' interest in the 18-year-old. We all know he's at Palmeiras. Again, he's monitored, monitored by Chelsea, Real Madrid and obviously Arsenal Football Club, as well as a couple of others. The report states Arsenal are ahead and are the favourites to sign the young defender. The North London club have intensified talks and are willing to take further steps to secure his services. Mikel Arteta's side have been in regular contact with the youngsters' camp. It's claimed they're expected to intensify negotiations before they make an official offer in the coming weeks. Back in August, re-signed the new deal until December 2028 and apparently he's got a $100 million release clause and also his club would prefer to sell him after next summer's Club World Cup. So we'd have to see. Maybe you could agree something in, in January for, for that period, but I don't know. We're still linked with with Vlahovic people, but parking off Vlahovic for a sec. Um, apparently, Arsenal have held initial talks over Adam Walton with the North Londoners said to be planning a potential move for the Crystal Palace and England midfielder in January to shore up their numbers in the middle of the park. Can't say I believe that, but let me know your thoughts, people. On that, again, we're still, if it would let me, still being linked with the same old names in, 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 a, in, a, in a sense, people. Uh, we're still interested in Arda Gala. Allegedly, Real Madrid are willing to sanction a loan. Now, for every link, every report, sorry, that says this, there's also rumours that quash this and it's easy to link Arsenal with attacking players. It's easy to link someone like Arda Galer, who's not essentially a regular at Real Madrid with a move to Arsenal, Leverkusen, Napoli, actually Crystal Palace, I believe, have been linked with him, people. Nonetheless, Arsenal have been keeping close tabs on Galer and view him in a similar vein to Martin Odegaard. As we know, we snatched the Norwegian initially on loan before his move became permanent, people. Moving away from that, Mikel Arteta is unhappy with one Arsenal player after he revealed his secrets. It's got to be Zinchenko. Exactly. Zinchenko talking too much, man. He'll be gone in the summer. Um, we're still being... What's this? Players who are most likely to leave Arsenal in January. I mean, we already know Tierney is up for debate. Allegedly, Kivio's agent is pushing for a move to leave in Jan. Like I always say, in the topic of it being easy, it's easy to link Kivio with a move away because he's not a first-team regular per se. Gardner's monitor Vlahovic's contract situation. Arsenal are prepared to revisit their interest in Vlahovic if they are given encouragement to make a move, according to 
GMS sources. The next fortnight will be key to deciding whether a switch is possible as Juventus are determined to end uncertainty over his long-term future by tying him down to a new deal before the turn of the year. The Serbian international is in line to enter the final 18 months of his current agreement, which allows him to pocket more than £350,000 a month. A week apologies currently at, at Juventus. So I have to see. GMS sources have been informed that Vlavic's agents are on course to head into potential discussions to thrash out a new contract. But Arsenal have looked seriously at the possibility of acquiring the Juventus marksman in the past and are monitoring his situation as the January transfer window edges close. So are we going to be taking around the houses by his agent? Because there could be legitimacy in Vlahovic wanting to sign for Arsenal or whatever, but maybe they could be leveraging Arsenal's interest to get you to get a better deal out of Juventus. And again, as I always say, how I'm sure he's still on a shortlist, but we wanted him before. We obviously need a striker, or that's an evident area that's a hot talking point. Um, his contract is winding down. Is there legitimate interest or is it a case of media outlets getting all of these things and adding it? Because we've been linked with a bunch of strikers. Off the top of my head, Vlahovic, Izak, Sesko, Jokorez, even Dominic Calvert-Lewin, you know, John Durana, Aston Villa. Some of them names I said, you lot probably thought, and let me know your thoughts. Which one would you sign? Yeah, we'll have them. Yeah, that one's dead. So it's easy to link us with players. Apparently, they slapped a price tag in the region of 67 million on the 24 year old during the summer. The Gunners will be confident of being able to seal his arrival for less than that figure if they formalize their interest. And he gives no indications of signing on the dotted line following internal talks. Vlavic is increasingly unlikely to leave Juventus next month, regardless of whether he's persuaded to agree fresh terms in the coming weeks. GMS sources based in Italy have learned. But the possibility of joining Arsenal or another interested party at the end of the campaign has not been ruled out. Allegedly, people who will need to accept a pay cut to stay. Juventus are currently unwilling to keep the Serbian international on current terms, people. So we'll have to look at that. And again, I don't care how much they pay or how much he gets paid. It's not my money, never a pocket watcher. But for him to get 300 or grand a week at Arsenal... He'd have to be near the top owners and Arsenal would have to really believe in him and, and things of that ilk. And obviously that has ramifications probably in the summer. Obviously, some people are not going to get that. But Gabriel Magalhães, Gabriel Martinelli, William Saliba, definitely. Bakayo Saka, definitely new deals. Obviously, whether you like it or not, you still got Kai Havertz earning a lot of money. Declan Rice earning a lot of money. There will need to be a decision, I believe, around Zinchenko, who's not earning, in my opinion, the na like the names I've said, but is probably on healthy wages with two years left. Partey's deal's running down. Do they renew that, though? Do, do they not? He's probably one of the top earners. Gabriel Jesus has a couple of years left on his deal, but that's another one. So it will be an interesting one to see exactly what Arsenal do. Away from that, Manchester City want to sign Valencia midfielder Papelo to provide cover for the injured Rodri, who did a tactical video on why Arsenal should get him. Omar Mamouche of Frankfurt has been involved in more goals than any other player in Europe this season. Now, he's been linked with us, not so much recently, but he's one that's always linked with us. 22 games, 18 goals, 11 assists is going to flag you on anyone's radar, isn't it, people? The Athletic has said Arsenal have entered the race alongside Man United, Real Madrid and Liverpool into signing... David, uh, sorry, uh, Alfonso Davies this summer on a free transfer. Do we believe that? I'm not sure. Thomas Tuchel will call Arsenal star Ben White to end his England exile two years since he walked out on the World Cup after Steve Holland route as he reveals three lion plans. The 27-year-old hasn't played since that World Cup in 2022. Far, it's, it's mad how time flies. Obviously, England's group stages for the qualifiers has been announced. Tuchel, if you've been living under a new rock, under a rock, um, is the England gaffer. He apparently said, Yes, I'll reach out to him. It should be a clean start and a clear narrative. It starts from January. I'll be in the stadiums from January. I'll not I will also not distract the players and they should know, OK, the boss is here from January. Fair enough, man. I'd love to see Ben White get involved, if I'm honest with you. At the same time, selfishly, someone that plays on a regular basis to know in the England when England and international football is, is, is on, he's not going to play people. But yeah, man, I mean, there's no higher honour to play for your country. And I think Ben White, I'm not saying he should start, but, you know, where you look at the defensive options, you know, Reese James isn't fit, but a, Reece fit, a fit Reese James... Obviously, you know, Trent Alexander-Arnold, players of that ilk, you know, John Stones is going to be there for the significant future. Where you look at the whole defensive options that England have, you can't say Benjamin White can't be in that squad. Especially for Tommy Tuchel, he can play right back, right wing back, one of the three centre-halves, assuming this is what Tuchel is going to do. Yeah, man, it'd be good for Ben. But likewise, if he doesn't want to play for England and he just feels it's, it is well, it is great. But if he feels with Steve Holland, Southgate and those coaching staff gone, he wants to resume his England career. 
he's got my blessings, man. Although as an Arsenal fan, naturally, whenever there's an international break, you're going to be scared about assuming Benjamin White goes there. But Benjamin White, Declan Rice, Bukayo Saka, Calafuri, Gabriel, Gabriel Martinelli, Tommy Asu went fit. And the rest of them and half of the names I said there and maybe some are missing out seem to be coming back from international duty with injuries and you know, even Thomas Partey, someone for Ghana, you get a bit scared with him. He's uh, not gone to the last couple internationals with, with his country. So, be interesting to see.